hear you, but he can't see you. Oh, okay. I was wondering about that. Okay, thank you. You're How about now? Can you see me now? No. No? Okay, well, let's try this friend thing. Um, friend invite. I haven't received a friend request. Okay, I don't know why that's not working.
switch to a robot avatar. Do you see that, um, Carlos, or not? I do, yeah. It's generic. Okay, let me go back Just into settings generic and social. Avatar. Okay, I'm going to send you a friend request, John. Try it again. Good. Okay, we... it's, okay you should have received a, fr a friend request. Did you get um... it? Um... Yeah, yeah, I got it, and I responded to it, so let me just see if we're friends or not. Um, let's okay, see. Uh, you're not, because your your nameplate would be yellow if we were. Okay, that's weird. Um... <laughs> why, why don't you guys respond together, and then come back here, or I'll go back to the front. Yeah. Uh, respond to what? Just respond into the room. Uh, well, yeah, okay, I can do that. I'm going to respawn and I'll meet you back at the entrance, okay? okay? Sounds good. Work, I can still see, I still can't see you. Here, I'm here. Oh, so I can see you. Yeah. Okay, um, as long as we can hear each so, other, it should be fine. Yeah, let's just go with that. It's, yeah, uh, I mean, the weird thing is I can see... Um, an icon, a round icon of you, and then Carlos, above your head, I see a, a round icon, too, with a little picture. Yeah. You see my, you don't see my drone, right? You see my fallback. No, I just see you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm on desktop. You're in Quest. No, you can't be on Quest. You no, no, to, I'm, on I'm on desktop. I'm on desktop. Well, let's just go with it. Um, as long as you guys, and if you turn the name tags on, then you guys can see where you're located. Yeah, I always have my name tags on, so we'll know generally where we are standing, but we won't, just won't be able to see each other. I think the important thing is that we can hear each other, so that's good. Yeah. Is is my sound okay for you, John? You might need to adjust your volume. John? Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah, Ryan, yes. Give me a sec. Um, let me... You can't hear me now? Yeah. I can hear you, but you're. I want you to adjust your volume so you can hear me. Okay, hold, give me a second here. Let me crank my okay, volume uh, up. Okay, while we're waiting, Carlos, yeah. um, I have actually visited uh, Organism Epilogue 1 and Epilogue 2 just so they're all preloaded, so okay. just in case. Yeah. You, well, we are. Uh, can live. you hear me better now? Um, you could probably turn it up a little bit. Your volume. That would be on your okay, side. Okay, it's a hundred percent. My output is a hundred percent. Okay, well then, don't I worry can... about it. You're fine. Yeah. And uh, Ryan. And I, I... Go ahead, John. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I keep getting this friend request, and I keep responding to it. Do you want to accept the friend request from Ryan Schultz? And I say yes, and it goes away, and then just comes back. It might be because he's... Yeah, I'm not sure you, what's wrong. Maybe he sent you a bunch of them, and they're all popping up. I did send you, like, three or four, I think. Well, every time I go there... Um, like if I if I if I go out and I come back, it's back there. Friend request, yes. Anyway, oh well, right. <laughs> John, what I would suggest is that you go ahead and um, quit uh, VR chat and then come back in. We'll wait for you and I'll let uh, Ryan do an introduction while you're getting back in. And let's see if that right. solves everything. If you do a restart on VR chat. A start steam again. Too. Okay. We'll wait for you. Okay. All right. See you in a minute. All right. Good. Ryan, so you're all good with all right, the controllers? All right. What about that other person, that woman that wanted to join us? I take it she's yeah. not? That's right. Yeah. Okay. You want to give an update now? Well, I'm, I'm all set up and ready to go. Just let me know when you want me to start talking, okay? You can. You can start. Start talking now? No. 
Oh, you're invading my personal space. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready. Go ahead. Anytime you're ready. Okay. Hi, everybody. This is Ryan Schultz. Uh, this morning, uh, Carlos Austin is going to be live streaming me and another person named John as we explore a world created by Dr. Morrow called uh, Epilogue, uh, part of the Organism series. This is Epilogue 2. There are three worlds. One is uh, Organism, the first world, and then there's the Epilogue 1, and then this is the Epilogue 2. We're starting here. Um, we tried to start the live stream yesterday, but then it turned out that I had not properly charged my Knuckles hand controllers. You can see my fingers here. And, um, and so we had to unfortunately cut the live stream because I was not able to move around after a while. So I have made sure that my Knuckles controllers are all fully charged. We're just waiting for John to join us. And, uh, and then we'll get started. We will probably start off where we left off at yesterday's live stream. I think we went for about maybe 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. And, um, John, uh, Carlos is going to, uh, lead us back to that point, And then we will continue from there. Um, while we're waiting, I just want to talk a little bit about this initial space. Carlos, you can uh, pan around while I'm talking if you want. There's definitely a old 1950s Soviet uh, nuclear reactor feel to this place. Um, it's actually really well done. Uh, the, uh, the person who created it, Dr. Morrow, is Russian. And you will see the Cyrillic language all around us on signs and whatnot. And uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of, uh, you know, those puzzle solving games like Riven and Mist uh, by Cyan it gives me that sort of a feel. Something has happened here. We don't really know what has happened here. And we have to kind of gather clues as we move around and explore. And um, so we're in this kind of... Um, central space with piping through the roofs and snow covered trees and and just basically uh it looks deserted it looks like people left in a hurry and uh and that, that's kind of where we are right now carlos did you want to say anything uh while we're waiting for john no i i think this is probably one of the most amazing worlds i have ever seen in any platform amount of detail yes, the texture work is amazing and and also the creativeness uh dr morrow does work with certain motifs uh that he has in a lot of his uh uh in all other worlds which are trains uh european trains not american trains then chairs uh hats uh a figure from the 40s or 30s the with a long overcoat and the hat and here you can see his logo in front of right now. That is his logo that he uses. Uh, I communicate with Dr. Morrow through Discord and he is very kind. He uses, uh, he doesn't speak any English, period, but he uses uh, some kind of translator and he's always very kind uh, when he communicates with me. I've never met him. Uh, he's won awards for the worlds that he has created and he, I think, uh, organism, it took him four months to build it, which is extraordinary. He has uh, some other people that help him out, but he is the master world builder. And I also know that apparently he uses AI uh, programs to be able to create the art that you see on the walls and stuff like that. Welcome back, John. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, John, I can hear you, but again, I cannot see your avatar. Uh, can you see my avatar? No, I can just see a, a round um, kind of um, icon above a gray thingy. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm assuming that there's some sort of bug where I can't see you. Are you on desktop or on the Quest? He's desktop. No, I'm actually on Steam desktop. Okay, okay. So uh, I am in Valve Index with the Knuckles 
Apple's controllers, as you can see by me wiggling my fingers. Um, unfortunately, VRChat does not support uh, the, uh, the, the attachment that I have that makes your mouth move. But uh, I don't think this avatar even has that capability. So um, you're talking, what is that and thing? we can see your teeth and your expressions. So it's oh not, really? Yeah, it's not doing the face tracking, but uh, your avatar is very sensitive to your voice and your mouth opens. Okay. Yeah. All right, because um, this is actually a double check. This is the the avatar I created using Ready Player Me. Yeah. So uh, that was the one that I I set up using ready player me uh which of course is an avatar uh service that is provided to many different virtual worlds and social vr so um now that we're all here uh let's go carlos do you want yeah. to kind of lead us yeah, to yeah. the start place again and we'll right. start from there yeah let's go john you, you ready lead the way and i will follow yep john yeah, hang on. Um, I'm just going to say yes to this friend request again and see what happens. Okay, now I can I see, see you, now. you Okay, because now I, I see you okay, online. Okay, I can see okay. you now. Okay, I can see you that, too. That's going right. to help. Okay, all right. John, why... Uh, now I can maybe go back to my... While we're doing introductions, you want to do a little introduction yourself and just tell us uh, sure. what your part is in virtual reality and the projects you're working on? Sure. Are you filming? Yes. Yes, he is. And you, you, you gonna let me have some? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Hi, this is John Harvey. I'm gonna go ahead, right? Yeah. Hello, this is John Harvey from the Virtual Film Company. Today we're in VR Chat, exploring a world called Epilogue Chapter Two, I believe it is. But also chapter one, these are absolutely fantastic worlds which really prove that VR is alive and well. And if you're on VR chat, I would highly recommend you explore these worlds and of course check out the virtual film company on YouTube. Cheers. Now can you tell us what the virtual film company is about? company is dedicated to promoting filmmaking in virtual environments, whether that be in virtual reality, in programs like iClone, Real Illusions, Character Creator, Unity, Unreal, etc. We're trying to change the whole paradigm of how movies are made. And John, can you tell them uh, what, what your Twitter account is and how you are doing AI art and very good at it? I am an AI artist. I, about a year ago, decided to focus on mid-journey after trying a lot of AI programs with some luck. But Midjourney really grabbed my attention, and right now I've created approximately 154,000 images on Midjourney, and I post to Twitter every day, so you can see my creations on Twitter every day. I'm also right now experimenting with AI video, can you, which can, occasionally I will also post to Twitter. Can you tell us what your Twitter handle is? Sure, at Digitally Wired. So all my handles, if you look for at Digitally Wired, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, wherever, just look for Digitally Wired. All right, very good. Are we ready to go? Yes, we are. Lead right. on, we will follow. All right, let's do it. John, I will follow you. Go ahead. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. <laughs> Which way did he go? Over uh, here. Go right. right. Go right. Oops. Yeah, Carlos, don't oh, go ahead too fast. Okay. 
Okay, well, um, go ahead, lead us on. This is the part that really gets me. Like, you can tell you're in some weird world where, you know, everything is upside down. If you look up, you can see upside down furniture. And then you enter this wonderful space that just reminds me of a black hole sort of at the top of some very 1950s brutalist architecture from the Soviet Union um, and just whirling cars and trees and pallets and stuff. So, okay. Um, why don't you lead this on, Carlos? John, you with us? John, hold on. John? We're up here. Like there, I got you, I think. Yep, there we go, okay. John, you can use right, your- just come inside the building, John. Yeah, you can use your okay, shift. You get in the building? Just jump. John, just hit you your need space to move bar. over a little bit to the left. Move a little bit to the left and then try it again. Oh, there we go. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. All right. Cool. I need to try this. I love these huge fingerprints on the building. That's just so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the palm print, the glowing palm print on the door. And these look like chicken feet to me, the prints on the wall. Pigeons. Or pi I think ah, of that's pigeons what it is. Pigeon. That. That's right. It's pigeons. All right, let me see which one we're going to. It's uh, this one here. I think it's to the right here, isn't it? Left. Or to the left. This Either. one. Right. John, are you, are you there? I'm here. Keep coming up the stairs. Okay, we're just going in this doorway here to the left. Go ahead. Yeah, see, it's a pigeon here in the... It's like you can see on the wall here, somebody's put on a graphic of a pigeon in a sort of a upside-down triangle. Yeah. Go ahead, Ryan. Lead the way. I'm just going to let you guys... I'm going to warn the live stream viewers right now that I am probably going to have to take off the headset every every little bit because my glasses are fogging up inside. Um, but uh, otherwise, I should be okay to go. I also noticed there's a large pigeon on the chair right at the right behind you, Carlos. You yeah. can turn around and give them a view of this huge pigeon that's staring down the hallway. <laughs> it's actually quite funny. I never noticed it the first time. Yeah, and look at the the hallway as it curves upward. Yeah, that's really cool, actually. Yeah, I think. I think we were here before, weren't we? I don't we, remember We didn't this. come this far. Oh, well, no, I picked a door on the side. There was a temple. I think, did we walk by it already? Yes, we did. All right, let's turn around and go back. We're going back in the other direction, John. Yeah, There's a door that leads to a temple. Carlos. Yeah, I'm here. We are going here inside this door. This is where we got stuck last time. Right. So did you guys and this... find the the four digit number? Uh no, this is the first time, well actually technically second time that I've been in this experience and we haven't actually gone through uh any of it except for the first 20 minutes on yesterday. We got as far as here. Actually, so, we, uh, we. I see Carlos has changed into his uh, video droid. Yeah. Hi, Carlos. Hey. And we are going to now go where to where we got as far as yesterday. So why don't you follow me, John? We're going up the stairs here and to the right. Right, but but there's a, a in the entrance there's a clue that says find the four digit code at the end of the pa at the end of the passageway. Right. It's right. Like, and. and uh, it's three digit actually. Oh, uh, three digit, yeah. whatever. I mean, yeah. a code. Um, yeah. We looked for it the other day, but couldn't find it. You have to get to the end of the map before you get it. Yeah, oh, that's what okay. I thought. That's what I thought I read. 
Okay, we, this John, and you can hit your shift key, and there you can run. And the W. I'm, I'm playing with my controller, actually, my game controller. Yeah. Is All there right. a way to uh, run on that, Carlos? Uh, well... Uh, I don't know. Yeah. It depends how you have it configured. Okay, so... We're going to go through that uh, doorway. That's where we ended up. Uh, right. Yeah, I thought this would be a good opportunity to... Practice. Okay, I'm now standing where we had to right. stop yesterday because my Knuckles controllers had battery charge and ended. So I'm just going to go explore this room. Um, I see a bunch of piping on the floor and what look like stacks of old newspapers and crumbled up beer cans and stuff. And there seems to be an inverted pyramid here at the top in the ceiling. Um, and there's a TV set to static. So there's obviously some very intriguing elements to all this. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on here, but that's part of the allure of exploring uh, an experience like this. Okay, so let's go outside since there's no passageway here. And I'm just going to kind of keep wandering over here to where I see a whole bunch of dead leaves and some pallets. And, uh, and look at I that. see that there's a, what appears to be a gate, but that seems to be a dead end. So Ryan noticed that he's using the television as a light source to shine oh, yeah, on, the, very interesting. on the gate and on the leaves. And also yesterday, Ryan, you were talking about uh, how the schools don't allow for people to put a little piece of paper on the bulletin oh, board. Oh, okay, yeah, I can say that part again. If yeah. you want to take a picture of the wall over here, this reminds me so much. I work as a librarian at the University of Manitoba, and um, this reminds me so much of what the um, what the, the walls of the tunnel system at the university were just plastered with papers like this, all, just over top of each other, and they eventually passed a rule about maybe five or six years ago that banned this sort of post rant, uh, relentless posting of notices. And they're just restricted now to uh, very neat and tidy bulletin boards. And uh, so, yeah, uh, that's something that it, this reminded me of. Ryan, I think they've got your phone number up here. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That would explain all the crank calls I'm getting. Exactly. Okay. Um, so let's go out this room and go through that veil, that uh, uh, turquoise veil hit straight ahead. Okay. Don't, don't go fast. Go slowly. Well, this, uh, this wall has been yeah. kind of plastered with newspaper. I see some sort of electrical equipment here on the wall. Okay, there's uh, there, there seems to be some sort of force field or some kind of uh, energy field here. So uh, I am going to go through it now. Oh, okay. Laundry. I was not expecting that. Come on, John. I hear uh, background music and what sounds a bit like pigeons. Um, don't don't jump off that and edge. I notice that there's no. I noticed that there is a, a wooden path that starts here, where next to the left of where John is standing. So I'm gonna go down here. Come on, John. Uh -huh. Where did yeah, be go? careful. Down I actually here? fell down an extra level. Whoops. You might find it kind of tricky to navigate. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> okay, now here there is a ladder that leads to an open window. Um, it looks like that's where we're supposed to go. No, no. Go to the end. So, go to the end of these boards. Go to the of this bridge. All right, well, it just leads to a wall, though. No, no, keep going, you'll find Oh, no, there's, a, there's an opening here. Oh, this is 
interesting. It's like a children's uh, play set. Um, matchsticks, pencils, pencil crayons, a little teddy bear. Uh, everything is super sized, like I've been shrunk down. And there is, seems to be a pocket card here of the Moscow subway system. If I if I can read my Cyrillic carefully, I am not really an expert. I don't speak Russian, but I kind of recognize some characters there. So it looks like Moscow Metropolitan. It says up there, um, which is actually kind of interesting. And this whole thing is a cardboard box. Okay, I think somebody is joining us. I see another avatar coming up. His name is Dig. Oh, I think that's John. Yeah, Did that, John fall through? That's him. It's John. Okay, while you're doing that, I'm going to clean my glasses and take my headset off for a sec. So do some, okay. do some scenery. All right. John, I'm right next to you. Fall down. Welcome yeah, back. Man, I made it this time. <laughs> yeah, you have to be careful about that. Um, I don't know if you're having any extra <laughs> problems because of you're using a desktop and a... What are you using? A well, joystick? I, yeah, well, I'm trying to use a joystick and a mouse i hate the desktop but this morning when i logged into the quest it wanted me to re-register and i went to the registration page and the page wouldn't load so i don't know what's going on um do you have any like uh blockers or like uh you know they, there are things like you block origin that kind of block cookies no, and no, no. tracking? It worked, worked yesterday. It, it, you know, so they've obviously done something. Um, they want me to re-register, so, um, no, I don't, um, I mean, I'll deal with it later. I should have, um, given it more than half an hour. I, I should ask, John, where are you physically located on the globe? I'm in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, and, uh, Carlos is in Austin, Texas. Where are you? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Cool. That's one of the great things about social VR. You can get to know people without having any clue or idea where they actually are in the real world. Yeah. Okay. Right, um, right, so we've looked right. at this. Uh, we've looked at this. There's a blue sphere kind of hanging in the middle here. And a huge... We, I now see looking up into the ceiling that there is uh -huh. a large pigeon looking down at us. From We are inside a cardboard box... We are being inspected by a rather overwhelming-sized pigeon with red eyes. Okay. Um, where do we go from here, Carlos? All right. So now we can just jump off to the ground. Go out the, the door here and then just jump to the ground. Okay. Good. After I love you, jumping. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I see a door with some enticing green here, so why don't we go in? And there's a, a hallway here. Uh, there's uh, hanging laundry, uh, some suitcases up on a shelf. Ryan. And uh, what, one other yeah. thing you'll see, look at all these shoes over here. He uses shoes a lot. Oh, yeah. Very large shoes yeah um, somebody who's like size 15 and there's doors here to different rooms the first door here on the left I'm going in there is a huge tree stump and really not much else there's a bed in the corner and a piece of paper which seems to have a poem it's in Cyrillic which I do not read and uh, that's pretty much it. Some posters. It looks like someone's bedroom, except for this huge tree stump that is in the middle of the room. So let's go on to the next room. I'm going to go back into the hallway. 
and uh, there's another room. There's a tricycle right here in the center, and uh, seems like someone has abandoned it. And the next room is a very small room that just basically it looks like a porta potty, but it's shaped like a throne. Uh, which is kind of funny, rather amusing, and there are a bunch of horseshoes hanging from pegs along the walls. I think those are seats. So that is obvious. Well, maybe, Pardon? Uh, maybe they are horseshoes. Uh, I was thinking they might be oh, toilet maybe seats. maybe they're toilet seats. Yeah. Actually, there could be toilet seats. It does yeah. actually match the toilet seat on this porta potty. And look at the bright okay. light that's coming out of the, the toilet. That is weird. It's, I guess to oh. light, light your butt up and lighten it. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty hilarious. You want to take a look, John? Here, let me get out. Jump oh, into the toilet. This yeah. is a very, there's <laughs> lots of little details here. Yeah. Like, uh, Carlos, if you actually see where I'm pointing yeah. up here, there's like a ladder that leads to a bunch of large suitcases on uh, another level. And if you take a look up here, there is a a sled that is hanging on the wall. R Rosebud. Um, R Rosebud. Yeah, I was just going to say that Rosebud. Now, if we go into this room here next to the bathroom, there is a bathtub and a very large lighting fixture with uh, steam and a large face of a rubber ducky, which is rather quite amusing. There is a what is a mirror here, but you really can't. S you can only see the bathroom behind you you can't see yourself in the mirror so i don't know if that means i've turned into a vampire oh it's, it's raining in the bathtub that is so cool it is such a cool effect and look at the tiles on the wall ryan yeah the tiles are all cracked no but the little um, teddy bear and isn't that the teddy bear? Wasn't that the Olympic symbol of the Sochi Winter Olympics? It could be, yeah. Or the Moscow Olympics yeah. or some Olympics. But he's also got oh, moths yeah, on there. Either, uh, huh. There are a couple of other Olympic symbols in here, so there must be some significance to that. I see you've changed into your Ready Player Me avatar, John. It looks good. Yes, yes, since you can now see me, so... Okay, so why don't we go on and keep exploring. I'm going to leave this bathroom. Carlos, um, quick question for you. Uh, what did you say the command was to hide the capture window menu bar? The capture window? Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, menu bar on the capture window where it says VR chat. Can you hide that or not? Uh... I, uh, I'm full. Uh, how do you make it full screen? Uh, I think you can hit Alt Enter. Oh, uh, Alt Enter. Okay. All right. Let me try that. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. Let's keep. You guys ready? Yep. Yep. Here okay, we are. Let's keep going. This, this is a very interesting hallway. Now there happens to be a door here on the right. I'm just going to go in. And there are stairs that go down a level. So why don't we go down these stairs and see what's here? Oh, wow. This is like some sort of subterranean canal sort of thing. Um, this is a very interesting room. This kind of reminds me of like in being in the Venetian sewers or something. There's like uh -huh. a sewer or a canal. Yeah. And there are uh, trees. There's more laundry, some art. Some very interesting art, very Soviet style art. Here we see uh, the name of the artist is underneath each of these pieces. The, and there the is a, a fragment of a Gothic church window uh, carved in stone at the far end over here. Uh, some very interesting things. Also, newsprint on the walls. Yes. Uh, Soviet style newsprint on the walls uh, as wallpaper. Oh. Very interesting stuff. Stuck in the sewer. Oh, there's a roaring fire and another gothic chair that looks like it's been attached 
via cables to two large pigeons wearing top hats, statues, and uh, just like an office, is sort of a, and there's a huge light bulb up above it uh, with an incandescent filter, nice touch. Um, this so, is very interesting. Ryan, one of the things Dr. Morrow does is that you see this little cubicle that just looks kind of random, uh, just a little space. But uh, Like this? Yeah, like this. But look over here to my right, and look what you have. There's a, sort of another set of stairs leading yeah, down. Yep. Yeah. Sort of a subway feeling. John, are you with us? Are you stuck? Um, John, you seem to have fallen into the canal. Can you get back up? I know. Can you? No, I can't. Come uh, over can here. You, come. Come. Uh, I, can you see I'm me? Stuck. Yeah, I can okay, see. Okay, can you, you can see you me at all? Me? I'm waving my hand. Come, come, come to where I am. There are stairs up. Move towards no, me. I can't even move from here. Hit the no, okay, I think John is... Hit the space bar, John. There. And then, and then okay. push, and then push forward as you do that. There you go. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, come oh, towards me and then okay, come up. Good, to, good, okay, good, you're going to need to good. jump up again to come up a level and then join me up the stairs. Okay. Keep doing it. You're almost there. All right. There we go. All good, right. good. All right, good. we're going to go down another set of stairs. There's sort of a subway feeling to this particular staircase with the uh, fluorescent right. lighting tubes here, just down here. Oh. Um, this is a room that appears to be full of pages of, from books and ladders that lead up to open windows. So let's go up one of these ladders and see what happens. Wish me luck. Good luck. Uh, okay. Oh, shit. Okay, obviously <laughs> I can't... I, 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 it looks like you can't actually get out of the windows right now. Carlos, is that correct? Uh, yeah. It's just uh, very... Okay, you know what? John, don't even bother. We're going to go back upstairs. Yeah, let's keep... Sure? Yeah. Uh, none, none of these go up? No. Let's, uh, let's head back to the canal. Okay. Where are you? Are we here? There we go. Okay, um, what do we do next, Carlos? Well, let's explore the canal. Okay, so I'm going to Get keep walking way. along here. There are stairs here on the, uh, that, at the very end, and what looks like a complete gothic window. You with me? Yep. Carlos? Yep. 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 Okay, so, um... I'm just going to go up these stairs, and uh, there seems to be uh, some glassware, some bent Salvador Dali-type glasses, uh, a Russian test pattern on a TV set, an old, uh, an old uh, cathode ray tube television set, and a bed uh, with what looks like, I'm afraid I can't make out what the name of the book is. Like, I, my Cyrillic is not that good. Um, but at, there look. is a ch chess piece. If I look through the window here, uh, there is a pigeon sitting on a chess piece. I believe it is a, a pawn. And, and uh, he's wearing a top hat. And you can see that through the cathedral window. So, I think, I think very it, interesting. Uh, I think it's a king because it's got the cross on the top. Is that a king? Yeah. And then the... Okay, I'm, I don't play chess. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go down it's the like stairs the here at the other... chess, too. Yeah. Is the book about chess? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's about a chess master or something to do with that. It has well, chess Russians pieces are on the cover. big into chess. Okay, I'm going to go down the stairs here at the other end of this bedroom and go down to the other end of the canal.
Ryan? Ryan? Yes? Uh, come this way, please. Go to the first okay. the first door after you go down the stairs where the neon is. This is what I was talking about earlier, about these little things that you don't expect. Right there, go in that room. See the stairs there? Okay. Go up the stairs. Okay, more stairs. Okay. I'll wait for you guys here at the top of the stairs. Do you want me to go in? Yeah, go ahead. I'm right behind you. Okay. I'll keep an, an eye out. Well, the there's gun. a pool here. There's a, a pool here with a pipe. And um, I appear to be able to walk on water, which is rather interesting. Uh -huh. um, there doesn't seem to be too much else I can do here, though. Can you hear Carlos, is there anything I can do in this in this room? Uh, well, no, well, look out the window there and see what you see. There's a clue there that's important. Well, I'm looking through the, the, the into the window, and there appears to be a river, an underground river of some kind, and a platform on the other side. Not really clear how to get to it. Well, it's to the right there. There's a doorway. We need to go through there eventually. Uh, a door. Uh -huh. Oh, I see the the concrete doorway passageway to the yeah. right. Okay, yeah. you're saying I have to get in there? Eventually, yes. We'll come back to that. But there's still... Let's go back okay. and continue the, the path. John, come with us. There's a, a car parked with the headlights on, which is a rather interesting effect. You wouldn't expect to see that here. Uh -huh. Oh, here's another doorway with some stairs. That is probably... Carlos? Yeah, I'm here. Let's, um, let's do I it. I found another doorway with some stairs. This appears to be the part of the um, this is where construction we... that we saw from the window. No, this is where we came in. Oh, is this where we came in? Yeah, remember? Okay. That was um, the artwork in front of us. All right. Um, oh, you're right. That is where we came in. So right. let's keep going this okay, way. Okay, now we're going to go up the stairs here at the other end. I'm going to have to come back and take a good look at the Soviet art here. It's really quite interesting. Okay, here's a, another bad one that actually looks kind of interesting and comfortable carved out of wood and huge stacks of huge books on both sides very interesting when you look down this uh, the canal it's so beautiful with the lights and the, the water yeah it's actually very very nice yeah very symmetrical I, you know what? I know that there's a camera feature here. I think I'm going to take a picture of this. Yeah. On, uh, on, on your menu. Photo camera. Okay. I got it. I got it. There you go. I can never remember how to get these pictures afterwards, but that's okay. Let me see They're if I can... on your computer... They're stored in a in a particular. Let me take folder. another picture. Yeah. L look under your pictures folder, your images folder on your computer. There should be a folder in there called VR Chat. That's it. Thank you. All right. I gotta remember now how to turn off the camera. All right. Done. Okay, Carlos. Where next? Okay, let's go back uh, on this side of the canal. Here? Yeah. Here or your side? My side. Okay. And let's go down. Oh, is the there? Uh oh, let's go down the hallway. Okay, I thought we've been here before. 
Yeah, we're we're leaving now. Okay. Oh wow, that was a, a long trip. <laughs> okay, we're gonna continue going down this hallway. Uh, look at this kitchen. And here. uh Oh wow. Oh there's a um I think they call it a samovar. Yeah. Uh, it's a Russian tea urn. Here. Right. And uh and what appears to be a Soviet newscast from the nineteen seventies on the TV set over the kitchen table and a bunch of ancient Soviet appliances and a bunch of stoves. This is actually quite cool. Uh, he's got some really wonderful effects for the boiling water. Yeah. Uh, an animated texture that gives the impression of water boiling and steam rising. Um, it's really very well done. And if you look up, you see this beautiful stone cathedral ceiling. And there is a staircase here that I think we should explore. So uh, why don't we uh, go up this staircase here? The stairs are rather steep. And uh, there is, this is the top level. And I thought I saw, oh, maybe there isn't anything here after all. It just seems to be a balcony. I thought there was a door up here. Interesting. You can just wow, this is so well done. Yeah. This has got to be one of the best social VR experiences that I can remember. This reminds me of something... The only thing that I've seen that compares to this was that one that was in High Fidelity by that guy. Um, I don't remember his name now. It was... It was... VR chat... Uh, you can certainly... This... This person, Dr. Morrow, obviously has a very good skill set when it comes to creating uh, content. And um, I wish I could remember the name of the guy that did that wonderful experience in High Fidelity that we both visited, Carlos. Um, it was about the space aliens and uh, the huge stone circle in yeah. the sky. And there was uh, like caverns and stuff that you explored. Was that Noras? It was. It was Noras. N O R N O R A Z. He had a a cavern. I that... think his name was No Nosage. His name was yeah. Nosage or something yeah, like that. Yeah, he moved to Japan. Oh, did he? Okay, yeah. cool. He was very talented too. Yeah. And this reminds me of some of the stuff that was done in Sansar by um, Zebras. That fu futuristic city, that really Severus. futuristic... S Ju the German guy. Cerberus, yes. Yeah, Cerberus. The German guy, Cerberus, yeah. yeah like the, He made that yeah. one with the subway system yeah. and everything. Yeah. That was 2077, that's yeah. what it was called. Yeah. It's still that there. was amazing. It's still there. Is it? Yeah. Okay, because like, those are among the, the, the most important uh, in terms of visual impact and just design social VR experiences that I can think of, and I would rank this among them. Yeah. It's just amazing. If you want to turn around and get a good view of the stone cathedral ceiling with the laundry hanging, the, the bright green clothespins are a bit of a whimsical touch. Um, this is actually amazing. What do you think, John? done a, a really good job i i'm very impressed i was lucky enough to come well not to this one to the first chapter with a woman that spoke russian and so she filled in a lot of the blanks in terms of what the significance was of certain things and it was very interesting to learn more about that and so i'd like to actually learn more about the same thing 
clear in terms of you know why he put certain things in here yeah obviously if you don't speak or read russian um you're probably missing part of the the clues let's go back down and exit the kitchen and go back into that interesting hallway i want to get to the end and <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to come back and take some shots. I might even write up a blog post about this and include a link to the live stream once you post it to YouTube. Yeah. Uh, um, look in okay. That. Did I miss a door here? No, right I didn't. Here. There's a door here where you seem to be inside an aquarium. And um, there are uh, a, sh a shoe that's being used as bait, which is quite amusing. And some fish and a sort of, sort of a 1970s soviet style apartment but it's got some gears uh some uh piping all along the walls and uh and uh cranks i guess you would call them to turn very interesting and valves. you can kind of see through the kitchen here they're valves like steam valves valves Val okay is that what they're called? Okay. Well, remember. So Steve? anyway, I'm gonna head back. I'm yep. gonna head back out now, and this is where the wooden hallway floor ends, and it, we see the stream, and this is where we were looking through that window before, and I'm going to basically start entering the stream and go into this. Oh wow! Okay. This is a really interesting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is uh -huh. so. You train. seem to be going into a train, and a subway train, and you get the impression that you're moving. It's not actually moving, but what is moving is the animations on both sides of what appears to be a uh, Soviet subway tunnel, and it's a very interesting stuff in the train. Again, it's all old television sets and bunk beds, and and just. And also you get the impression of movement by the swaying, hanging lamps that illuminate the subway car. This is so well done. This reminds me of the subway in 2077 by Cerberus. Mm -hmm. um, like, he had a, an actual working subway in his. And uh, if you have a chance to go to Sansar, just a plug for Sansar. Go to Sansar, look for 2077, and just explore. And you will go down the stairs to a subway station and just wait for a train and jump on. It takes you to a completely different part of the experience, which is wonderful. All right, if you get out at the end here, you are in what looks to be almost like a shopping mall with a marble floor and what looks like a sort of uh, Soviet-style statue of Vladimir Lenin or some other communist with a comically overlong arm that's being propped up by some twigs or some long sticks. Very interesting. It's, um, I'm going to walk towards the statue just to see if there are any passageways. There's uh, a, a, some stairs that we should explore. And then over here, it says, do not enter sign and some more stairs. So, of course, we have to go up those. And, um, yeah, here's the statue, uh, which is really kind of amazing. That is amazing. stairs here to the side let's go to the other end of this hallway I just want to see what there is here
there's a really nice effect, Carlos. Uh, aim at the floor near where I'm standing here on the grate. You can see that, that there's an animated texture that looks like water flowing down the grate, yeah. along the hallway, and down the grate. Yeah. Very well done. Okay, this looks like it's a store. Um, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to walk in. And, oh, this is interesting. There is a, uh, a, lot, of, a lot of nothing. This appears to be some sort of um, liminal space. I think is the term, where uh, maybe a, a bit of a maze. Like, liminal space is, is very empty space. Um, oh, look, there seems to be a purple statue at the far end. I'm going to see if I can get there. Oh, it's, uh, it's a purple monkey standing in front of an old-fashioned cash register. Oh, it's like one of those monkeys with the clapping symbols, only he doesn't have a symbol, he just has his cash register. Oh, and there's a door on the other side here with a neon sign with palm trees on it. I'm just going to go over to that. Carlos, how long does it take to go through this whole thing? I mean, there's three there's three parts, and... It, it depends how... How long does it take to... It depends how much you uh, explore. Because there's always something okay. more. All right, this looks like um, the travel agency from hell. Um, uh, it's all concrete walls. Oh, and there's a cavern here. Oh, this is cool. All right, now, something I saw in when I, I actually visited Organism and Epilogue 1, and I think it was in Epilogue 1, there was a pictures, paintings of comets, and I see a comet here in the sky on the other, I mean, all of a sudden this travel agency from hell has this opening like a cavern, and you're like in this cavern, and if you look up in the sky here, there's a blue comet, which is really cool. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna go keep going here. You let me know if I'm gonna go off track here. But this is this is one of the best VR experiences I've had. Period. Not just in VR chat, but like period. This is incredible. Hey uh Ryan. Yeah. So Dr. Morrow watches this video. If you wanna say anything to him, he'll he'll appreciate it. Okay, uh, Dr. Morrow, I know you don't speak English, so I'm not sure how this is going to work. I'm assuming you've got, like, uh, you have some mechanism for translating uh, English into Russian. I just wanted to say that um, this is one of the best experiences in VR that I have had. Certainly a highlight of this year, and, and I'm really glad that Carlos suggested this. I am enjoying this tremendously. <laughs> John, did you have anything to add? You're standing right behind Carlos. I was totally blown away with Chapter 1, and the same thing applies to Chapter 2. As Carlos said, you can spend hours in here exploring. It's just totally amazing, totally mind-blowing. I, mean, I, can't, I can't imagine how many countless hours this guy spent looking for or creating textures and then finding or creating stuff from scratch probably in blender um i would assume living in the living in russia he probably doesn't have access to the expensive adobe acrobat tools as a matter of fact i do know that adobe acrobat yanked all the licenses in in russia so anyone who has Adobe Photoshop or any of the Adobe tools for creating digital content, they are useless. They're bricked. So he must be using Blender for this because that's free and they can't stop that. So fascinating. There's a door here. Let's go. Ah, oh, this is amazing. This is like, this is, ah. Oh. This is amazing. The scale, the sense of open space, especially after being in so many small enclosed spaces. This is amazing. <laughs> okay, I see some patio lights here. I'm going to head towards the, uh, 
the patio lights and what looks like a sort of a lit up area. It looks like somebody just kind of put uh, something here in the middle of it. It's kind of interesting. Okay. Oh, here's another door. On train stations, um, you know, there, there are certain themes that seem to reoccur. Um, the you know, animated... the train in. Look at this canal. Look at this. Look at how it feels like real water. It looks like real water, rather. Um, all due to animated texture work. And I also, when you look out to the ocean, you can see waves, uh, an undulating of waves. It's really well done. This guy could give master classes on how to create content. Okay. Um, I'm almost. I want to. I want to do so many things at once, but <laughs> I think I'm gonna actually. I think I want to see that that lit up area there where the the lights are and what looks like a sort of a a, a gazebo space. This is, I am just completely blown away by this. This is amazing. You Maybe. guys have got to visit this. Um, if you're looking for the creator, his name is Dr. Morrow. It's D-R-M-O-R-R-O. -R -R -O. And do a search in worlds for Dr. Morrow. You'll see all the worlds that he's created. I will definitely be visiting all of them after. Oh, well, this has got sort of a Riviera feel to it. I hear some pop music. Oh, this is obviously some sort of nightclub. You can see the neon sign here. A uh, Soviet-style 1950s murals inside. A lot of brutalist architecture, concrete, very Soviet. And there's a pier here, and if you can go down to this well, that what seems to be like a dance floor. Wow, this is amazing. Here, here are the shoes again. I have to take a picture of this. I'm going to get as far as I can to the corner of the pier here. Yeah, I'm gonna take a shot. Um, John, why don't you come stand behind me so that you're not in the shot? Because I want to actually get a shot of this shoreline and this this wonderful. Um, oh. My hand is shaking so much. This is so irritating. Oh, yeah, you did a, a really great job with shaders here for the water and the river. Yeah, I mean, I'm really impressed. And the gently undulating waves, so well done. Okay, I'm ready to go back and go into that. Uh, I don't know where Carlos went. Oh, there you are. Hi there. Okay, mm -hmm. let's let's go. I want to go back to where that river was that led into that other door, and let's see if what's let's, there. We're right that behind okay? you. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. There appear to be like uh, I don't know if this is a vending machine. Yeah, it looks like they're like vending machines for like Coca-Cola or something. Nice little touch, little added touches like this really make all the difference. Well, this after having come work. all this way, we should have a Coke. Just so <laughs> kick back well, on these chairs. I don't think I don't think we can actually. I don't think there's a lot of interactive content. That would be. 
the the creme de la creme if we could actually have a little bit of interaction. Um, okay, let's keep going. I'm over here. Okay, I'm going in. Oh, cool. This is like, uh, as soon as you go in, look up, and you'll see some very interesting architecture and what are obviously subway trains and tunnels, and you're just rusted out old cars and just such cool stuff. The music is very ominous. Uh, organ music. Uh, very different sort of somber feeling almost. I'm going to go up this flight of stairs here to the right. Yeah, the music is lovely. I'd love to know what music he's using for this. is completely broken. So let's go in this door here. Okay, we are what looks like a, a bunch of safety deposit boxes. Some of them appear to have been jimmied open. And there's another set of stairs here. They're mailboxes. Are they mailboxes? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's another one of those ornate uh, chairs here. And... Um, it's just kind of a balcony sort of thing. Almost. Yeah, chairs is another reoccurring theme. I think uh, we saw a lot of chairs in in uh, chapter one. Ryan, try sitting over there in the chair. See if you those pipes might have audio coming out of them. He does things like that. Or you um, can. Okay. Maybe you can't sit in. Okay, I'm sitting here, or I'm trying to get myself positioned as if I were sitting, and I can hear stuff, but it's kind of... It's just... It's uh, kind of... Yeah. It's just noise. Yeah. Mechanical noise. Very targeted. You, yeah, definitely. Uh, obviously, good, good uh, sound management the sign because you really only hear it when you're close to the chair yeah okay john did you want to listen to the sound from the pipes here i'll get in there you'd hear it yeah. Yeah, interesting if you come up, up to this direction you can hear it right here okay let's keep going let's go back I'm over here on the other side of the stairs. Ryan, I'll give you a tip. What? Go up to the upper level of the stairs, all the way to the top. Where, here? Uh, just find a stairs that you can get all the way to the very top, uh, catwalk. Okay, I, I see a pair of some stairs here, so let's go to the top. John, we're over here. Okay, that's it. All the way up. Oh, wow. 
You guys gotta come up here. We're coming. I'm getting there. <laughs> this is amazing. There should be one, okay. one more level. Okay, I'm going to... Uh, one more level. I'm going to take a picture of this. This is amazing. This is just amazing. <laughs> like this, the just the work that went into this. Now this almost seems like uh, some sort of subterranean tunnel or something with a whole bunch of crisscrossing paths. This is wow. So well done. <laughs> uh huh. Very well done. Wow. Uh, very cool. Gonna take another picture. Okay, let's, oh, oh, oh. Oh, wow. Well, this is like nuclear power plant meets Gothic cathedral. This is Holy cow! Oh my god, I've got to come back here and revisit each of these and explore it in full detail, because this is just mind-blowing. <laughs> Seriously! Yeah. I mean, this is incredible! Go up those stairs over there. Okay, gonna go up the stairs. Oh. We have to smuggle the Dr. Morrow out of Russia if he wants to leave. <laughs> he could make a fortune if he worked in the West. This is incredible work. Oh, well, this has got uh, very creepy vibes. I mean, the snow falling upwards, that's just totally creepy. And the power lines and the, the what looks like nuclear a nuclear plant behind the church. This is, this just goes on forever. The sense of space is amazing. 500 plus megabytes, and so it excludes a lot of people from visiting this. Which PC you, know, VR. Need you would need to have a good when... a good you would need to have very really good broadband to get all this downloaded quickly. Well you'd need so. a good computer. I don't think you're gonna do this on a on a just a plain Windows PC personally. I mean I don't know what I don't think you could do this on the quest. Could no, you, you do this on the quest? Can no. you visit this? I guess no, no, you no, were. No, no. You would have to be plugged in. You'd have to be tethered on the quest. I mean, because it, it, this is yeah, this is just blowing my mind. <laughs> let's go, absolutely mind blowing. Let's go down this. Yeah, uh, it's trippy. These houses over here. Okay. No 
notice that there's also really good use of light to draw you onwards, like the light over there. Yeah. With the what looks like a red vending machine or some of some kind. Yeah, it's really ex inspiring. It, you know, given the size. I mean, you know, we when we used to build for Alt Space VR and. Um, I mean, even building for cross-compatible worlds, one really has to be under a hundred megabytes, and you know, ten megabytes, twenty megabytes is really optimal. But you can't do anything close to this yet with that kind wow. of limitation. I mean, even working within those limitations that you do have to have for rather obvious reasons, because you have to be able to download the whole world before you can go in. Unlike virtual worlds like Second Life, where you enter the world and then everything loads sort of afterwards, um, which can be rather disorienting sometimes. You have to have the whole world loaded, the whole map loaded, before you can enter this world, which is just amazing to me. It just, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. Mind blowing. <laughs> Some what look like really large, perhaps fishing poles. Oh, it's fire extinguishers. It looks like a booth that's meant to house fire extinguishers. Very interesting. And then there's some more Soviet brutalist architecture, some building over here up the stairs. Why don't we go up the stairs here? Obviously, we're meant to do that. But first, let's okay. pause and look at this amazing scene. Wow. Well, come and look at the scene from the stairs here. <laughs> oh, wow. That's cool. Oh, wow, there's obviously something happening on the other side of this nuclear power plant. I've got to take a picture of this. And, and that seems to be his theme, it is like, you know, things happening that you can see in the distance or, you know, somewhere else in the, in the, whatever, storyscape. I'm not sure exactly. A what narrative. Call it. The narrative, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. For me, this is a paradise okay. for photography. Oh yeah, I'm like you know the the fur the more I explore. Uh, what time is it now, Carlos? It's uh, twelve eighteen. Okay, so yeah, I think uh, I've got about forty five minutes left in me uh, before I am going to have to stop. That's fine. So let's see how far we can get in forty five yeah. minutes. Yeah. Um. Because I find that for some reason the headset's just really digging into my nose today. For some reason, you're um, just you're just not used to it. <laughs> you haven't worn it. For I'm not a while. used to it. It's been it's been a couple months since I've worn my Valve Index, and I'm not used to it. Way too. Okay, which way should we go, Carlos? Uh, I would go back downstairs and go to that ob observatory that was on the top of the hill. Okay. To the left. I'm not real, oh, there's stairs here. Look where that pink light is. Oh, interesting. I just noticed something really cute. If you look across the bay here, there's a huge hat being propped up by sticks. Right. Okay, so we're going to get to this observatory, right? Yeah, it's... Um, Is it up this way? Uh, just no. a minute. That I think, I think we have to go this way. See if we can get up here. Here. Can you get up that hill? Uh, no, it's too steep. Alright, um, we need oh, to... Oh, maybe yeah. we can get up this ladder? No, it won't let no. you. Let's go back up. Let's go back up the stairs. 
I think we have to go that way that I suggested. Yeah, the you're right. The stairs. You're right. Again, notice the use of the light to kind of indicate what direction to go in. Mm hmm Okay, there's a path here. Well, uh... Oh, wow. Um, another mural, sort of like a Soviet cosmonaut mural. Interesting, eh? Beautiful. Yep. Whoa, did what? I just fall off? <laughs> John. What happened? I think I just fell off the steps. Oh, it's okay. There you landed you go, on though. a good place. Um, yep. There's a, a really neat effect where... Uh, there's a sort of the the marble of this round room the marble walls have an interesting effect where the what seems to be reflected light i don't know if you can capture this in the live stream very neat very it's obviously meant to show the shading the shader work is incredible so all right there's two doors one with uh, what looks like a down symbol and one looks like with an up symbol. So which one do you want to take? John, you we'll pick follow you. John, you pick okay, one. We'll tell them down this one. All right, never mind. Oh, okay. Lots of graffiti. Uh, obviously a bathroom. Or, yeah, with huge yeah. Uh, hand, warm air hand dryers. This is rather amusing. Uh, yeah, this Most is obviously meant to be some to sort be a of graffiti. Theme for some reason. Uh, All right, well, I there's guess... a really neat black hole effect here at the very end of the hallway. I'm wondering what happens if I get close to it. I'm going in. Oh. Uh-oh. All right, you can see through it, and this seems to be the other side of the bathroom. Oh, there's a door here. I wonder what the, where that goes. Oh, okay, this is interesting. It's like a cross between a uh, an indoor garden and uh, an office or something. Okay, here's a door that takes us to the other side. Ryan, Ryan, yes. Check this out over here. This television. Where? Over here. If you get close to the black hole, it makes a sort of a, a wet sound. Oh, okay. Well, that's different. Better than static. This is like or a test prompt. Eighties television. 80 bags. Yeah, definitely. You can tell by the posters on the walls, too, that the very, very wham, sort of 1980s. Yeah. All the notes. He has that motif. I think he's probably an older person, too. Hey, guys, come over here. There's uh, a room with a sort of a red glow and a whole bunch of air freshener stickers, and we're in some sort of a cavern. And it goes down all the way. Should we go down? Sure. And it also goes up all the way. Sorry. This is probably that... that. Let's go up all the way first. Yeah. John, watch out. If you fall, you're going to land all the way to the bottom. Oops. Okay. I'll be extra careful. This is the elevator. The elevator shaft? It's one of the elevators. This one that's in front of us, John. Right here in the back. Uh Oh, shit. Yeah. 
Did you go through it? Through the elevator? Yeah. The elevator, I'll come back down. If you go in the elevator, okay, it takes no. you to a different place, but and then turn around and come back in. Okay. Yeah. Dang. That's weird. So let's go down. Is Carlos here? Yep. Oh, there you are. Okay. Yep. Um, I'm going into this room here that looks like more underground corridors and stuff. Oh my god, what the hell is this? <laughs> it's a huge finger going up and down, like on a hydraulic lift, and it's pressing a button that glows red when it's pressed. Oh my god, this is inventive. Can you imagine how much work it took to actually... Like... Like, he had to draw out architectural type drawings of all the space and how it interacts with each other. Fascinating to find out what, what his, you know, uh, how he put it together, what he was thinking, just, I mean, everything about it. We should... Wow. All right, let's yeah, keep... We, we do okay. a talk show every... Go ahead, I was going to say, we do a talk show on Spatial at noon Eastern Time every week on Wednesday, and um, he would be a great guest. We've had people like Nico, I presume you know Nico. Who I've heard of this him. Kind of... Um, but unfortunately, Carlos says he only speaks Russian, so that he would need a translator. find someone at one of these technology companies that's working on <laughs> you know, instant translation and yeah you know, okay, Carlos, about... let's keep going keep going yep. yeah over this um, one all right yeah, i am well, starting to get a bit tired so we might want to wrap this up before the top of the hour okay well let's get back outside back. let's go back outside and then we'll shut it down there Oh god, I have no idea how to get back outside at this point. Um, we've been through so many different corridors now. Well, Do you know how to get back outside? Um, not in here. Let me see. I just kind of go... Oh, this is interesting. Come here. Look at this. What the hell is this? Looks like some sort of mechanical alien spores or something. That's weird. They look like a uh, eggs, alien eggs, like an alien egg. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Huh. Weird. And they're hatching light bulbs that, and things that connect to the wall. Okay, this doesn't take us outside again. I have no idea how we landed up here, and I'm not sure how we get back. Oh, this is interesting. We get on a train, huh? Holy shit, look at it. Oh, wait, I think this takes us outside again. <laughs> you wish. Well, it's, a, it's a different outside. Have you been here before, Carlos? No. I haven't. Wow. Let's see, is John still with us? Yeah, okay. Yep, yeah, yep, he's over yep. there. He's behind you. Let's go follow the lights and see where they go. 
when we came here last week and made the mistake that we had to find that three-digit code before proceeding on, the so we kind of spent an amazing. hour scouring downstairs looking for it. Okay, there's got to be a way to get down here. Maybe not. Come. Walk up the edge. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. We're getting wet. Yeah. It's a dead end. Yeah. Let's go this way. Yeah, Carlos, I'm going to have to stop soon. I'm starting to develop a little VR sex. All right, let's stop then. Right here. Okay. Can we, let's stop here. Uh, this is amazing. Thank you so much for telling me about his work. Um, I may write up a blog post about this, or I may wait until we do a few more excursions and then add those live streams. I know you're posting the live stream to YouTube, so thank you for doing all the recording. And, John, it was very nice to meet you. Um, we're going to call it quits for today. If you want, oh, you, you and you and John can keep it. going. No, no, we'll, we'll, but I'm gonna head out. We'll finish. Uh, let's finish the tour. Uh, I'll try to figure out how to get from here back out, and then when uh, we come back in, then we'll s somehow start here and then continue. I think. All right, sounds good cool. to me. Yeah. Okay. I can't promise anything, but uh, John, Not a you problem. Have any closing <laughs> thoughts? <laughs> Well, this has been you know, a totally amazing tour, and again, as I started off by saying earlier when we first started this tour, it's an amazing example of why virtual reality is so special, that you, know, you could spend thousands of dollars and go to Disneyland or to you know, wherever, and you're not going to get the same experience in my mind that you can get in a place like this and you know there's other places like this virtual roller coasters but this is you know both an adventure and an artistic expression and it's just so amazing you know for this itself i would get well you need a gaming computer to get here but, but uh, yeah, i would it's go out and buy one yeah. just so you can visit yes yes yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to say goodbye to both of you, All and right. uh, you take care. We'll Have a good Sunday, Brian. We'll be in touch. Yep. Okay. Okay. Sounds yep. good. And uh, uh, nice meeting you. Yep. John, we'll and be in touch. Glad we got the friend thing worked out. Oh. Yeah. I mean, this gave me. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I'm finally starting to feel a bit comfortable with the joystick, uh, with the game controller. Yeah. Well, here, I'm going to go ahead and but, shut shut the uh, stream down, and then you and I can talk. A minute. Oh, sorry, I thought you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for uh, showing up. If you've lasted this long, uh, we will be back and continue this story. So let me...